Welcome to our lesson discussion session. It is my hope that God has kept you safe. And I believe that our study is going to enrich you spiritually. Before we begin our study, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your love and protection. We thank you for the opportunity to study the word. We pray that your Holy Spirit may guide us and help us to arrive at that which is your will for us. Take care of our discussions to the end. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Now, with me to do our Bible study this morning, I have members of the panel, and I'll give each to do an introduction. Welcome, brother. Brother Samuel Ganga. Thank you, brother. Mrs. Beatrice Kapot, thank you, and be blessed as you continue. And I'm Dan Oma. Welcome. Uh, we are talking about the Bible, the authoritative source of theology, of our theology, that is to say. Now, Elder Genga, when we talk about the authoritative source of our theology. What should we bear in mind before we go into the details of the lesson? Thank you. As the title uh, registers the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. The second phrase, the authority. The authority here, it's about power. And uh, source, beginning, that begins, yes. our theology is our study about God. So in, in summary, mm -hmm. our study about God, we only have the Bible as the authority, as the only empowered book yes. to enable us to understand God. Thank you. Sister Beatrice, do you have something to add? Maybe I would add that um, the fact that the Bible is the authoritative source of our theology, mm -hmm. it implies that there could be other sources, Yes. but these sources do not have the authority mm -hmm. over the Bible. In other words, these other sources are important, but they, are, they, they, they do not go above what Scripture says. Now, we have what we believe and what we teach as a church. Our understanding of God, how he looks at us as his children, how we are supposed to relate with him, is all anchored on scripture. Now we have a number of sources that impact or influence what we believe and our perception or our understanding of God. And we are going to find out from our study what does tradition, experience, culture, and reason have to do with our belief in God or our perception of God or the things that we practice as children of God or as a church. But above all, at the end of the day, the scripture should have the final say. The book of Isaiah 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Sister Beatrice, why would this text be so important as we begin our study? Well, this text is very important as uh, read. Mm -hmm. uh, the law were actually the teachings that Moses had to the people of God. Yes. And as we look at the testimony, it's actually what we have heard, what we have seen, mm -hmm. and therefore we proclaim it to the people. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have to hold on to this law and the testimony, mm -hmm. then we must have the light. Yes. And the light is the Bible and the Bible alone. And again, 
more about the testimony of Jesus. Thank you. As uh, Madam Betis has put it, uh, the law is uh, the directions, the, the, the teachings that God has for his people. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people have summarized this to the commandments of God. Yes. But when we look at the testimony, mm -hmm. here it pertains to what has been seen, mm -hmm. what has been witnessed. Mm -hmm. In other words, there has been a fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the law, the commandments, yes. and the prophecies and the teachings of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. they are part of them and mostly have been fulfilled in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And it is all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of the testimony, mm -hmm. We are talking of the experiences, things that have been fulfilled yes. according to the scripture. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, if I get you right, you're saying that our theology, or our understanding of God, or our beliefs, must be tested on the basis of what the commandments of God say. Correct. And what does the spirit of prophecy say? Because God revealed his will to his people, even through the prophets. So what does prophecy say concerning what we believe? If it is not in tandem with that, then Isaiah in his writing says, it is because there is no light in them. And therefore, even right from the beginning, the Bible is put as the anchor upon which all our beliefs and our understanding of God should be based. Thank you. Now, Elder Genga, when we talk of tradition, people are always very cautious. Yes. And uh, one would not want to be associated with the tradition. Mm -hmm. You see, you are a traditionalist. That is traditionalist uh, understanding, or that is traditional thinking. Yes. But can tradition positively influence? Our theology or our understanding of God or can it influence positively our belief? Thank you very much. Well, uh, tradition, first of all, I want to say that tradition mm -hmm. is a practice developed and adopted over a period of time. Mm -hmm. There are things that uh, we are born and we find them in our community mm -hmm. being done yes. and we are not supposed to change them. Mm -hmm. Because that is the tradition yes. of the society. Yes. So they have a bearing in our understanding mm -hmm. of God. Yes. Then uh, while many times these traditions are physically done, mm -hmm. there is an aspect of belief in them. Mm -hmm. And so for us to believe in God, mm -hmm. we also must have another source of tradition. Yes. So if you look at the, the law, mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, God gives Moses a number of instructions mm -hmm. that the, so the Israelites were to practice yes. and were to be their tradition. Yes. In the eyes of God, in the mind of God, mm -hmm. they were meant for their learning to understand God better. In, in other words, Elder, you're saying that that is biblical tradition. Yes. Tradition that emanates from, from the Bible. The Bible. Yes. But is there any other source of tradition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tradition per se can define so many cultures. Mm -hmm. We have Luo tradition, we have Kikuyu tradition, mm -hmm. we have Kisi tradition, mm -hmm. and each and every society yes. has their different traditions. Yes. And so they have a bearing on our understanding mm -hmm. on some basic things. Yes. So. These other traditions, mm -hmm. while they are changeable, they are manipulatable, mm -hmm. they can be manipulated by other factors, yes. we do realize and understand mm -hmm. that even the devil can take chance yes. and change a tradition. Mm -hmm. So when a tradition is not in line mm -hmm. with the scripture mm -hmm. and the devil takes control of it, yes. then we kind of go traditional way more than mm -hmm. The biblical way. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are cautioned. And that is the essence as we interpret the Bible. Do we interpret the Bible in the light of tradition of the elders of the society or we interpret the Bible 
in line of tradition of Christianity in the in the Word of God. So you, you bring out two: uh, the, the biblical traditions and the That's human right. tradition. Amen. Sister Beatrice, Jesus appears to have a problem with the Jews concerning tradition. In the book of Mark 7, 1 to 13, a number of a number of traditions are mentioned there. The washing of the hands, the pictures, the cups, the coaches. Because if you are a true Jew, if you were to partake of a meal, then that ritual, that, that process of the washing of the hands had to be done to perfection before you partake of a meal. But, but they see Jesus' disciples, you know, partaking of a meal before going through what was tradition according to, to the Jewish people. And, and they have a problem with that. But in Jesus' reaction, he, 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 he picks out one element that I would like you to, to comment on. That you teach the people to declare that what they own is a gift to God, is dedicated to the service of God, and therefore you have no share in it, even though you are my parent. How does that go against the will of God? Can you react to that? Thank you, Elder. Well, according to these uh, Pharisees, mm -hmm. it's like they were treating the traditions of much more importance mm -hmm than Christ himself. Yes. And therefore, they looked at the tradition mm -hmm. and ignored Christ. Mm -hmm. No wonder Christ is saying that uh, they, they give him lip services. Yes. They don't mind about him, mm -hmm. but they want to take the traditions of much more importance. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, they forget the biblical way yes. that there, there should be love, mm -hmm. even in their tradition. Mm -hmm. And so, even if they are to look at, you know, obey your parents, mm -hmm. and then they will say, you know, when I obey my parents, when I've set aside a given gift for God, yes. then our parents should not have a share. Mm -hmm. I don't have to take care of them. Mm -hmm. But this is against the word of God, mm -hmm. that there is this Ten Commandments. The first four talks about, you know, the love to God. Mm -hmm. Then the others talks about the love to each one of us. And therefore, even if you obey God and do according to what God requires, yes. then this must be applied equally mm -hmm. to even God and even to others, mm -hmm. like between us, the human beings. Mm -hmm. Your parents, you have to take care of them. You have to provide for them. Mm -hmm. Then on the other side, God, you must equally love God. And therefore, all our traditions must have a basis from the Bible. The Bible. And again, that our giving of time is a biblical tradition. It emanates from the commandments of God. Yes. The word of God itself. But would it would there be any danger if 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 we decide and say, I have given my tithe to God and therefore I have nothing more to offer to you? Thank you very much. The Bible does not teach us to do one and leave the other. <laughs> The Bible is very particular that while we are supposed to obey and take care of our parents, yes. we are also supposed to return the tithes. So none, not one is supreme over the other. Mm -hmm. In light of the word of God, yes. we are obliged to do the, the two yes. at the same time. Mm -hmm. But now the tradition, the tradition, the danger of tradition is when we regard one to be superior mm -hmm. over the other. Mm -hmm. Like here, the lesson author is telling me, yes. the last line of the second paragraph, mm -hmm. they, were, they, they were human traditions, mm -hmm. and ultimately they led to a point where they made the word of God of no effect. Mm -hmm. yes. So if the Bible is telling us to, to take care of our parents, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and the Bible is telling us to return tithes, mm -hmm. both of them are relevant mm -hmm. and very important. Mm -hmm. While we should not ignore either one, yes. we should be able to balance what are our abilities over the two mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sister Beatrice, your son is sick. You pray to God for healing. 
and the child is healed and you glorify God. You thank him. And you, you, you can go out and tell people, I have a wonderful God, a loving God, a caring God. And the next day your husband falls sick and you pray and he doesn't recover and his condition worsens and he goes into ICU and, and everything is black for you. And your testimony changes and you say, I don't think I believe in my God anymore because from what I've gone through, it looks like God does not care. I mean, what is the place of experience in informing our understanding of God and our belief? Thank you, Elder. Well, experiences are uh, events mm -hmm. that leave impressions yeah. in someone's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Some of these experiences are good, mm -hmm. while others are bad. Yes. And in many a times, bad experiences tend to draw us away from God. Mm -hmm. Good ones, when we have them, we we'll always believe and trust so much in God. But what does the scripture say about our experiences? Our experiences should never at any time overpower what the word of God says. That all our experiences must be in line with the scripture. And for this reason, when we have bad experiences, then we need to refer to the Bible. Yes. What does it say? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 13, mm -hmm. we will be hated. And of course, at times we might even be prosecuted, we might even be killed. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, those who hold to the end mm -hmm. will always be saved. Yes. So even if our, our experience is bad, mm -hmm. we should not you know, run away from God mm -hmm. and say, this is not a loving God. Yes. Actually, if we were to look at the characters in the Bible, mm -hmm. they had several experiences, and in most, many a times, we are supposed to rely on them. Mm -hmm. Look at the experiences of Job. Mm -hmm. He had bad experiences, yes. but this did not draw him away from God. Oh, God. Actually, he kept his faith, mm -hmm. and this is what we are supposed to do. Experiences shape our understanding. Mm -hmm. you know, they have great impacts in our feelings, mm -hmm. and even in our thoughts. And therefore, they will always affect the way we understand God mm -hmm. and the way we interpret the word, of God. the word of God. And for this reason, we are supposed to rely mm -hmm. on the Bible and the Bible alone. alone. Uh, Elder, I feel the Spirit is telling me that there is need for us to go and pray. For I feel the Spirit is telling me that this church has a problem. Or the Spirit is telling me but this pastor is not supposed to be the pastor of this church. And, 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 and we listen to you and follow what you say based on what you feel the Spirit is telling me. Is there any danger in such a kind of experience? Thank you. The lesson author is telling us this statement in the second paragraph mm -hmm. on page 43. Yes. It is God's desire that we experience the beauty of relationships, yes. of art and music, mm -hmm. and of the wonders of creation, mm -hmm. as well as the joy of his salvation, yes. and the power of the promises of his word. Mm -hmm. Our religion and faith are more than just doctrine and rational decision. Yes. What we experience significantly shapes our view of God mm -hmm. and even our wonder, our understanding of his word. Yes. So, actually, experience has a bearing in our understanding of the Word of God. Yes. But there are occasions where experience, some people have taken experience to override, to be superior mm -hmm. to the Word of God. Right. Such that we tend to be guided by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Somebody sleeps and dreams and then in the morning he wakes up and says, yes. I had a dream, I had an encounter with the Spirit, mm -hmm. and I was told we don't need this person in this place. Yes. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Love one another, one another. another. Mm -hmm. and hold, get to, to understand and love your enemy. That is the teaching of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible has got no space where there is discrimination or isolation. Mm -hmm. That one does not, the, the Bible does not. So when we come up with the idea that the Spirit has taught me mm -hmm. that 
this is not in right in line with what we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? Yes. But Ella, is it entirely bad if, if, if we, uh, we, we, we recognize the experiences that we've had with God, uh, we witness of his greatness, his love, and, and the experiences that we've gone through with him. Is it entirely bad? It's not bad. Mm -hmm. There are good experiences mm -hmm. which are in line with what God has taught us. Mm -hmm. The experiences which we can compare with what God have had with his people in the old ages. Yes. And these are experiences that can give us promise and confidence mm -hmm. that the way we are on is leading us to a better light. Yes. That's a good experience. Right. But there are experiences which can be manipulated by the devil. Mm -hmm. And that is where now experience becomes a weaker point. Yes. Because the devil can come in and give us some information that are contrary mm -hmm. to the desires of God. Yes. And we follow them as experience, especially when it, it, it happens that an elderly person, mm -hmm. an opinion leader in a society, yes. comes up because of this dependable experience. Mm -hmm. The society can be moved out. Yes. The church can be moved out of the light that the Spirit of God would desire them to go. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for that uh, elaboration. Culture as a source of what we believe, a source of our theology, our understanding of God and, and how he interacts with us as his children. Now when we talk of culture, we, we are thinking about the way the people live, what they value, um, uh, what they, they wear, what they eat, how they interact and socialize and all that. How does culture become an important element in shaping our beliefs? Thank you very much. Culture defines the tradition. Mm -hmm. These are practices which societies practice. Mm -hmm. They cultivate. Yes. They come up and they are cultivated. Mm -hmm. And the people get to be used to them. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of culture, mm -hmm. again, they change over time. Mm -hmm. And that gives them a weaker point. Yes. So whenever we are brought up under certain cultures, mm -hmm. How founded are these cultures? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible has its culture, the culture of Christianity, yes. which the Bible, which is in the Word of God. Yes. Obey your parents, mm -hmm. keep the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, mm -hmm. and all that. Do not kill, you know. Mm -hmm. These are things that as you live your life, you practice them, mm -hmm. they be become your just a minute, Ella. You're saying that Christianity uh -huh. is also a culture. In Correct. the context of the biblical the word culture, of God, yes. the word of God says, yes, uh, Sister Beatrix, there is an, our young people are shy to, to, to go for uh, church weddings mm -hmm. because of the fanfare and the expenses that are involved in it. So they would rather go for a shortcut. Is this Christian culture? Well, marriage and wedding is a Christian culture. But then the funds that comes with it mm -hmm. is of the world. Yes. And actually the Bible says if you love things of the world, yes. then you don't love me. It, it means you are of the world. Yes. And this is what people have now brought in. Mm -hmm. And this is so much corrupting the weddings. Yes. But the question is what is it about marriage? Mm -hmm. What is it about wedding? Yes. All these are provided in the Bible, mm -hmm. in the scripture. Mm -hmm. When you have to wed, you want to wed, you've got a partner. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Bible stipulates the steps that you're supposed to follow. Mm -hmm. And none of it talks about wealth mm -hmm. yes. and all the funds that is supposed to be in wedding. Mm -hmm. All this has come just because of the sinful world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so in many a times, we take our sins, you know, our thoughts, our worldly wishes, mm -hmm. and then we corrupt it with what the Bible says. Yes. So let us always stick to the Bible. 
and learn on what the Bible says. Thank you. So, in other words, a culture must also be subjected to what the Word of God says. Yes. Because culture can also carry with it elements of the sinful world. That's why John warns against being in the world. If we love the things of the world, then there is the element of carrying with us the things that are in the world. Thank you. Sister Beatrice. And maybe before you continue, yes. we realize worldly things mm -hmm. are easily manipulated mm -hmm. by the devil. Yes. But heavenly things mm -hmm. which are inscribed in the scripture, yes. they remain permanent teaching. They cannot change. Mm -hmm. They are God's word meant for his people. Yes. So it is important that we choose mm -hmm. to leave the culture mm -hmm. prescribed by the scripture, yes. not the earthly culture. Okay. Thank you very much for that addition. Uh, Sister Beatrice, uh, just in brief for the sake of time, uh, reason and our theology, mm -hmm. can you tell us something about how reason should influence or how it impacts what we believe? Uh, reason simply means we use our mind mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. and of course from our reasoning we make lo logical decisions yes now one thing we know is that we were created mm -hmm. and of course it means that even our mind is created mm -hmm. it comes from god yes. and therefore god has control over it mm -hmm. but because we live in a sinful world our reasoning is corrupt with the same mm -hmm. and therefore in many a times we tend to think that we can reason more yes. than who our creator God, you know, is. And so we want to do our own things. We yes. even ask questions. We question God. Mm -hmm. You know, does, does God exist? There are so many things that God has done mm -hmm. that are beyond our ability. Yes. But because of the sinful world, mm -hmm. we think that we, because we have the mind of, we can think, yes. we can do more than what God, you know, has given us. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, eh, the fear, the, uh, if, if you want to be wise, yes. then of course we have to fear God first. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Because it is God who created us. Mm -hmm. It is God who gave us the thinking capacity mm -hmm. and therefore he has control over it. Yes. So if we want to reason and of course make logical decisions, yes. then we must <laughs> refer to God mm -hmm. as the owner of our minds. Amen. Thank you. Elder, are we expected just to go by faith and not exercise a faith that is based on reason therefore well uh, the bible is very clear i want us let us look at the, the second book of corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 and 6 yes it says from new king james version casting down arguments yes and every high high thing that exalts itself mm -hmm against the knowledge of God. Yes. And bringing into captivity mm -hmm. over thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. And having a readiness to punish all disobedience yes. when, you, when your obedience is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. That statement, Paul is talking to Corinthians yes. and is telling them that we should be able, that reason should be able yes. to help us cast down arguments yes. that do not exalt the will of God. Amen. So in reasoning, we kind of argue with our own simple thoughts mm -hmm. that this one is desirable. Mm -hmm. This one is a better choice. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying, mm -hmm. let it be cast down if it is not exalting mm -hmm. the will of the will of God. Yes. So there are if we have to reason, yes, we must reason mm -hmm. in the light of the word of the word of God. Thank you. But God still allows us to exercise the mind. Yes. We must walk based on informed faith. Mm -hmm. As we study scripture, God has endowed us with a mind that is capable yes. of analyzing things, evaluating and all that. Yes. But we must bring it to the subjection of the Spirit of God and the word of God. Elder, the Bible, the sole foundation, the sole source of our theology, the authority. 
say something concerning the Bible. Thank you. Be before I get to that, yes, there is this statement that the author of lesson gave us in the last line mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It is only when we accept God's revelation yes. embodied in the written word of God mm -hmm. as supreme in our lives mm -hmm. and are willing to follow mm -hmm. what is written in the Bible yes. that we can reason correctly. Mm -hmm. Our reason will be only correct when we bind it to the scripture. Amen. Thank you very much. Now, when we have seen tradition, culture, experience, and reason, they are good, they make part of our life. But we have seen their weak points. Yes. All of them can be easily manipulated by, by the devil. Yes. And they change over, over time. Mm -hmm. Circumstances changes with them. Mm -hmm. The Bible, which is the word of God, yes. One, it is everlasting. Mm -hmm. One, it was inspired by God. Amen. And last time when we were looking at the at the Bible, its originality, we saw that it was written by God Himself. Amen. God spoke through the, the Spirit and the prophets, mm -hmm. and this words were written to us. Yes. And so, it is eternal. Okay. Now, if we have to base our arguments, our reasons, our traditions, mm -hmm. our cultures, if those are to be permanent, then they must be consistent with the word of, the word of Amen. Amen. So, Bible should remain the fundamental mm -hmm. For all these aspects, if we have to look at traditions on the basis of the scripture, Amen. if we have to look at the experience, the basis of the scripture, mm -hmm. if we have to look at the reasoning, the basis of the scripture. Yes. So the scripture should be supreme in all. Sister Beatrice, we've looked at the various sources, tradition, we've looked at culture, we've looked at experience. We looked at reason, we looked at the scripture, the Bible. At the end of it all, what should we take home? The only authoritative source of our uh, theology is actually the Bible and the Bible alone. Yes. The other four aspects that we have just discussed, mm -hmm. they can be corrupted and they keep on changing. Yes. But the Bible will never change. Mm -hmm. Actually, our only safeguard, our only standard measure mm -hmm. of what our theology should be mm -hmm. is the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is the truth. And Jesus himself recognized the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we saw last week that wherever Jesus was tempted, he would refer to the Bible. Yes. And therefore, even us as Christians, our point of references should always be the Bible. Mm -hmm. We should not bring our own arguments, mm -hmm. you know, our own thinking, yes. our own thoughts, yes. that when we want to challenge the devil, mm -hmm. then we give our own reasoning. Mm -hmm. We will actually be drawn far from God if yes. we go that way. Yes. And for that reason, <coughs> it is the Bible and the Bible alone. Amen. Thank you. And before you, you wind up, yes. there is this statement also I want to pick from Thursday mm -hmm. about the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit should never be understood to replace the word of God. Mm -hmm. Rather, he works in harmony with and through the Bible to draw us to Christ. Amen. There are many denominations today. Mm -hmm. They claim to be spiritually guided. Amen. And so Whatever they tell the congregations that the Spirit has revealed to them, yes. many times are not consistent with what the Scripture says. Yes, yes. That is where now we miss the point. Mm -hmm. The Spirit has worked, because the Bible is very clear, yes. that when the Bible was being written, mm -hmm. it is the Spirit of God that inspired the prophets and the holy men yes. to do the writing. Amen. Meaning, this spirit of God is there even in the word. The words we read in the scripture belongs to God, the Father, the Son, and, and the, the Holy spirit. spirit. So there is no way we can separate the spirit from, from the word of God. Amen. So don't be cheated 
that this was a gift of, by the Holy Spirit when it is conflicting mm -hmm. in the scripture. Amen. It should not. Amen. Bella, there are those who are listening to you in various parts of the world now. Yes. In just a sentence or two, what would you say to them? Thank you very much. The lesson we have learned today is giving us the statement that let the Bible be the only source of authority Amen. when we want to study about God. Mm -hmm. So let not the spirit that people come up with they divert our minds. Yes. The other thing is the tradition mm -hmm. which we have seen. We have Christian traditions, we have public traditions. We have experiences that are the difficult, which are good, some which are bad. Mm -hmm. All the four are easily can be manipulated by the devil and to divert our attention from the word of God. But the word of God can never be changed mm -hmm. because we are able to see Jesus when he encountered Satan himself, he would say it is written. And that nullified the whole thesis of the devil. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Beatrice, you are part of All to the viewers, as we have just learned that it is the Bible that gives us direction in whatever aspect of our life. And I would therefore encourage you to follow the Bible Amen. and always find time to read the Bible and know what the Bible says. We cannot delink ourselves from our experiences. Some of them are normally good, some of them are bad. But then, what does the scripture say about any situation that you find yourself in? Okay. Always rely on the Bible. Amen. It will always give you solutions to the challenges that you are facing. Thank you. Thank you for being with us through our discussion. I hope you've been blessed. It is my prayer that the Bible will continue to be your guide, to inform what you believe, and to shape your understanding of God, our Creator, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you. As we close, uh, Sister Beatrice, you pray with us. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this where you brought us. Lord, we have studied your word, and we have come to a conclusion that it is only the Bible that provides a solution to our challenges, even as we live in this world full of sin. Lord, may you give us the wisdom, may you give us the knowledge, and may you give us the ability always to look and study thy word. Thank you for this day, for this is my humble prayer, Trusting and believing in thy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I still want to believe that you are before God this Sabbath. And your worship experience will be richly blessed. We still have other programs that will follow. Because God has a lot in store for you today. Welcome and stay with us.